Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh KI6NAZ. I've got a cool antenna here in front of me that I actually want to put up on the roof right now. It's like 6.30 p.m. in California, and I'm thinking I need to put this Chameleon MCOM3 base up on the roof right now. <laughs> The Chameleon MCOM3 base has a matching box with an antenna connector on the top that matches the wire loom that it comes with, the little spade connector, and it has a point on the top and the bottom for a counterpoise as well as a PL259 connector for your coax. It has a nice little handy hook here, and they recommend that you get this as high as possible in like a sloper configuration. That's going to give you kind of the best bang for your buck. In my case, due to the limited size of my residential footprint, I'm going to set this up as a inverted L with the box towards the ground, vertical to the top of a mast, and then down to another connection point. Um, that's a little bit less effective, they say, in the instructions, and I have used that before in other with other NFED type uh, antennas. It does okay, but just keep that in mind. The frequency range for the antenna is 2 meters through 80, and generally gets a 2.5 to 1 SWR, although, depending on your configuration, if you're by metal or whatever, that can affect the SWR, and you may need some kind of matching device like a tuner. One of the cool things about this antenna is that it has a pretty decent amount of power that it can take. 500 watts on CW or 250 on single sideband, which is pretty good. And I would assume 100 or less for digital, uh, particularly FT8 if that's the mode you're using. Aside from the matching box, the kit comes with a wire winder and 110 feet of what they call copper clad Kevlar line. And what makes it pretty cool is that they've added little um, insulator rings with a little carabiner that they have on all the little cable joints or connections so that you can have uh, a nice insulated type connection to whatever metal mast you're using and what's particularly cool is here in the middle they've got another ring in case you're doing something like I'm doing with the inverted L so again you don't have to go through a metal carabiner you can hang that off and give you a little bit of insulation from the metal cool little added perk for me, it's always nice to have an all-band antenna available, like something, like an NFED. So that's one of the reasons why I'm setting this up outside my house. Uh, let's go ahead and get that set up, and then we'll talk more here in the shack. So pretty easy installation here. Um, I've got this 2x4 that I lag bolted to the wall. Down here is my ground connection to a lightning arrestor. We'll be using that, reusing that. This is not the best hook for any sort of uh, setup like this. I'll maybe replace it, but that's the hardware I had on hand. A really good setup would be an open eye bolt like this one that's already here. But that's all right, we'll use what we have. Okay, the box is gonna hang like that. Here's the antenna lead, which is gonna go straight up to the roof, and we'll get coax in line with a jumper cable and connect it here, and the feed point will go into the garage. Okay, here we go. Hey Hexbeam, your video's coming out soon too, right? I hope so. All right, uh, it's over on this side. Whoop. There's the mount. Okay, so we've got the wire loom here. I'm gonna unravel this and I'm gonna take the center connector and mount it to my mast and let the antenna go to the ground, both ends. Connect the mast firmly to the side of the house and then I'll drag the other end over to that uh, pole on the other side of the yard and then connect the feed point. And that should be the antenna. Uh, I'll get a counterpoise on it too, uh, either today or very soon. But we might try it out with just just the radiating element and see. How's it turn on? There we go. Hey, it's actually kind of bright up here. Okay, here's the center connector. Okay, nothing terribly large just to test this out. Just to the top there, which is about six feet. And both ends go down there to the floor, to the ground. And I'm gonna run the long line out to that pole where the Christmas lights are. No, I won't be splicing into the Christmas lights. Here's the connection. So, a bit of strain relief. Mess up a carabiner instead of messing up your antenna connection. Let's get that out of the way. All right, so that's the feed connection. Now this line, we're gonna pull it tight. We're gonna pull it tight. 
and then run it across in the inverted L to the backyard. Let's see how much space we're left with. Okay, so uh, 120 feet is actually very, very long. Um, <laughs> so there's the mast up above me. Wire goes down to the feed box and then over and across to the pole right there where the, uh, the Christmas lights are. Then along the wall, <laughs> along this wall, across my wall, around the shed, like this so, and then ultimately, right there. Is this a permanent solution? No, but I never give anyone an excuse for not Let's trying. Let's see what the SWR is like with the Christmas lights off. I'm betting it's not great. So, an S5 on 40 meters. So it's like on 20. An S3. Now, this is the nighttime, so that will change tomorrow. One of the things that is difficult with an NFED like this is noise. And uh, to Chameleon's credit, they do mention that in the instructions, that you should indeed get it as high as possible. The height getting it away from the RFI is going to help a lot. Obviously, I have a Rube Goldberg type configuration for this antenna. Chameleon is very clear in some of the examples they give on what you should use. True to Chameleon's word, it took me about 30 minutes, not including setting up the camera and taking the shots, to set up the antenna. That includes putting it on the roof in a pole or on a pole. It's very easy to set up. Now, note that my match Actually, do I show you? My match being less than two to one on most of the bands is really the the box that's doing that. The noise level is indicative of the wire and the configuration I have it. I will get a match, but I may not get good transmission out due to the configuration I have of the wire. At the time of recording, the MCOM base is $149 on the Chameleon website. It's also the same price on Amazon. I've seen it go for less on other websites. You'll just have to look around a little bit, and it looks like it goes down by about $20. So like all my reviews, I always answer the question, uh, would I buy it? Yeah, I'd buy it. This is uh, not bad at all. It is very nice. You don't have to have a tuner in most situations for a multi-band antenna. Of course, please understand what you're getting when you buy an antenna like this. You need to work to its strengths and try to avoid its weaknesses. Get it high off the ground. Pick a configuration that is better for the antenna, like the box as high as possible and then the antenna sloping away. If you have a tall mast at your disposal, that, or your disposal, I would use that, that'd be great. You can also use an inverted L, like I'm using, but please get it higher up. In fact, I think I'm gonna add that second leg to my pole, and I'm gonna get it up a bit higher. That should improve things considerably. For those of you like me that have a small footprint, 5,000 square foot yard, for example, there is another chameleon antenna that I will be doing a review of very soon. It's also quite soda portable, so be on the lookout for that. I am Josh KI6NAZ. You're watching the Hammer to Crash Course. Thank you so much. Please click subscribe. Give me the thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and even set a reminder, because I do stream every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we cover all things ham radio related. Thanks a lot for watching. Take it easy. So after playing around a little bit, I uh, just got a couple contacts. KB7AK up in Washington, Vancouver. And that's the PSK reporter. Not bad at all.